Welcome back to another action figure review. In this review, we're going to take a look at Call Tesca. Call Tesca was released individually carded during the Clone Wars collection in July of 2010. It was a Toys R Us exclusive. The character could be seen in the Clone Wars Republic Heroes video game, which was released in late 2009 on various gaming platforms. Hasbro gave this very big figure 13 points of articulation, including a ball joint in both shoulders, elbow, and knees. There are swivel joints in the neck and left and then left wrist, both legs and ankles. The only part the only other part of the figure which is not movable is a right wrist because of the quad cannon part of Carl Tesca's right arm. And even though the figure is almost twice as tall as a regular Star Wars figure, it stands securely and there is no balancing issues. The concealed blasters sitting on Carl Tesco's shoulders are built in into the armor and can't be removed. However, the panels hiding the blasters can manually be opened. On the back of the so shoulders, Carl Tesco has two rocket boosters, which can be moved up and down. The quad arm attachment for the right arm fits perfectly and it is the only weapon included with this figure. There was no grappling hook which included, which could have been attached to the quad arm cannon as seen in the video game. The paint application on Carl Tesca is nicely done, with an almost metallic looking gold on the pressure suit. All parts are painted nicely with no factory errors or smudges. Even though there are a few details missing here and there on the armor, the figure turned out nicely. Especially its size impresses when placed next to a uh, another figure, another Star Wars figure. All in all, if you are a fan of the Clone Wars Amazon line, you are very likely to enjoy this figure. In 2010, as a Toys R Us exclusive, this figure retailed like $14.99 um, at the time of, of that you know when it was released. So what's that's a little bit of history for the figure and. It's release time and, and what he has to offer. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at Call Tesca up close. We're going to look at the articulation, the action features, the articulation, the paint apps, and we'll do some size comparison. So let's get started. Here's Call Tesca up close. As you can see, very nice sculpted, very nice painted. Very nice detailed. Very cool. So we'll take a nice 360 look at this figure. To start off. So you guys can see what we're going to take a look at. This figure is actually part of my personal collection. And I've had this figure since 2010. It's been on, in my, on my shelf. And I thought we'd do... A video for him because he's such a cool action figure and you don't really hear anybody well my well, people that you know online that I talk to or videos I watch I haven't seen me you know mention him for a long long time so I thought we'd talk you know bring him back up bring him back to life so to speak as I said previously there are you know, 13 points of articulation so we'll show you what that looks like um his head does turn now when he looks to the right, that's about farther he turns. And if he looks this to the left here, you can actually get his head all the way like to the back, but then it stops for some reason. His shoulders are on a ball joint. They will go up this much. And then they will rotate 360 all the way around. He does have bendable elbows. I think Carl Tesco's trying to get ahead here on the review. That's uh, about all you get for the... Okay, so I'll have to skip this part real quick. This part is the only removable part from the figure. It just plugged in. And I happen to bump it. it. It stays in pretty firm. But it is removable and that would have been nice if they would have had the grappling hook to the feature of this arm but 
Fortunately, it wasn't included. But you get a good 90 degree for that arm, and you get less than 90 on this arm because of the gauntlet. See, that stays in good. He does have a waist swivel here. That's not much, but it does move. He has articulated hips or legs, but you can't do much with them because of the, the waist skirt there. And he does have bendable knees, as you can see. Gets you about um, not that much. And his feet here pivot down like so. Oh yeah, there it is. Well, that's probably his leg kind of just turns. Because it is such a large, heavy figure, and the way his feet is designed, he uh, can stand like pretty much just set him down. He doesn't really have much of a issue of trying to get him to stand. Speaking of uh, a stand that he does come with on his traditional Clone Wars stand. And he, I don't remember if he came with one of his cards or not. Actually, it's been since 2010, and I don't know where the card is. I don't want to collect that gimmicky stuff. I may have it packed away somewhere, or I may have tossed it. I don't have the package. I just have... I cut this piece off from the package to have a little bit of a background of the figure. When I had him... When I actually had him packed away in the in a baggie, in a, in a drawer. But I will put a thumbnail up of um, what the package looked like when he was brand new from Toys R Us. He does have some action features that we'll take a look at. They're his sh hidden shoulder mount cannons. Do you guys see what those are by chance? here these two little front panels pop down and you can visually see his uh, shoulder mounted cannons and they just pop back up after 10 years they still stay perfectly there's no weakness in the plastic these are thinner plastic than what the figure itself is made with but they seem to function perfectly after 10 years. The other action feature that he has, he has hidden thrusters. And if we turn the figure around to the back, right in here, you put your finger, and he has these thrusters. That will help him launch in the air. If you can see those. These thrusters are articulated. They go up, you know, about as far as you'll hear for if you needed to be for if he was trying to maybe, you know, get a quick landing. And that's probably why his feet actually articulate because he can, you know, make just quick jumps for not short of time. Enough time he can maintain his flight, but that's getting pretty, you know, into details with the character. But then those just tuck away back into his can behind his cannons there. These cannons are not removable, they are stationary. Looking at the paint amps and the features, I mean the sculpting is really nice. He has these handles here, bars, whatever you want to, you know, use or terminology you want to use for them, but it's kind of interesting that a character can actually grab on that if they wanted to. He has some of these, it looks like shells, all the way around his waist. It's probably for his hand arm cannon here, a squad cannon. I think it's pretty well detailed.
Here's a better look at his feet. A very cool figure. Very, uh, definitely interesting because it's, you don't see a lot of larger characters in the this is a 118 scale action figure he's meant to be used with your 3.75 inch action figures there's only uh, several large figures like these that have been offered for all the years that Hasbro has been making you know larger figures like to scale with your you know 118 scale figures I just recently did a review for a build a dark trooper that I thought was extremely cool that I've had in my collection for a very long time. If you want to check out that video, that was really cool. Also, um, we will do a comparison, and he is actually, I believe, a little bit taller than the dark trooper itself. Yes, he is. So as you can see there. He does scale taller. So I think he's a little over around, I don't know, measuring, but he's about six inches or just a little over. Very cool. So for some other comparisons, we take out the Star Trooper. And if you want, don't forget to take a look at that uh, review. Very cool. So here is him with a everyone's favorite Stormtrooper from the Rogue One. He is pretty much up to just his waist, just above his waist, barely. So he's almost half of what that figure is actually scaled with. So he's quite large. Here he is with uh, the most recent Luke Skywalker to date from the. Jedi Palace. I mean, he's that, that looks just a little shorter than Stormtrooper, so he's almost at his waist waist length. We can actually, for you guys that cut multiple action figure lines, let's do a comparison of one. Of the larger G.I. Joe figures that's recently been coming out at Walmart. So here is a Destro. If we can get him to stand. I'm trying to get him to stand without his actual figure stand. So we can get a good idea of Carl Tesca's height. So I have to have my hand. Oh, almost. There we go. So that is one of the more modern releases in 2010 I'm sorry 2020 I'm still thinking about Carl Tesco um, modern figure of 2020 here at his Walmart exclusive retro line that's what that figure is from so he does he's actually a little taller than his waist so that'll give you guys who collect multiple like most collectors now have your know, multiple collections of 118 scale figures and this um like myself for example um I also take a look at in comparison if I can get him in the frame here of the recent 118 scale halo brute figure and he is one of the larger figures as you can he he's actually taller than the uh dark trooper but he does not taller than Carl Tesco. It is nice to have, you know, a diverse size of figures for your one team scale in a one eighteen scale to really bring out playability of your you know your figures, your your universe, or your storylines, and you know. You can bring in a guy to take out 20 stone troopers like that, you know, some kind of brute figure like these guys. 
or maybe even like your Hulk from the Marvel Legend, Marvel Universe line, you know, in the Lantern scale one. So, very cool. All right, guys. So, I thought you guys would like to see, you know, a fun flashback figure from 2010, 10 years ago, and it's a, a cool and fun figure compared to what we're getting, you know, in 2020, where action fi action figures are pretty hard to come by, pretty well sold out everywhere, and Remember the days when you could walk in a store and get figures left and right and have no problem getting an exclusive. Imagine trying to get this guy today and if Toys R Us was still around, you know, widely. And as an exclusive, you know, it was very difficult to get. So, if you guys like this video, uh, I have some other videos and reviews for extra figures you might like. So. Please check those out. Um, if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. If you would subscribe and help us out, help the channel out, help me out. And if you like this video, don't forget to like it and share it. And I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.